everyone, Jim Branscombe here for the Cinematic Void Vlog. Today, I'm going to be doing another top 10 list. Uh, I did one of these back in January for January Giallo for a top 10 Giallo film list. Got a lot of positive reaction to it, a lot of people sharing their favorite Giallo films and stuff. So I figured, you know, I'm going to do a few more of these in the upcoming weeks, months, whatever. So today's edition is a very, very niche subgenre. It is Los Angeles sleaze movies, or LA sleaze for short, and you might be asking yourself what exactly constitutes as a LA sleaze movie. Well, basically things where there's like, you know, visual antis, you get to see dirty, scummy streets of Hollywood and Los Angeles, drugs, hookers, violence, you know, all the things that make for great exploitation movies. Probably not great for LA tourism, but for exploitation movies, those elements are important. I need to give a special shout out to Joe Rubin from Vinegar Syndrome because he originally pitched me the idea of doing like a LA sleaze, like triple feature or marathon pre-pandemic. It, it was basically based upon a couple other triple features I had done. I did a grindhouse triple feature of Maniac, Last House of the Left, and Cannibal Holocaust, as well as a New York sleaze triple feature with the New York Ripper, Nightmares in a Damaged Brain, and The Driller Killer. Another inspiration behind this list was I just did a screening of the brand new restoration of Hollywood 90028 from Grindhouse Releasing, and coming up, I'm gonna be doing a screening of Vice Squad with actors Wings Hauser and Gary Swanson, and that's gonna be at the Egyptian Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, very fitting. And then later in the month of March, I'm gonna be down at the Frida Cinema. I'm gonna be doing Angel and Freeway again. Two great LA sleazy movies. So I figured might as well do a list and share some of my favorite LA sleaze movies. Now like the Giallo list, uh, I have a couple rules that I hear by when coming up with my list and you know, you're free not to follow those when you do your own list. But the main one is one film per filmmaker. I feel like, you know, that way you get a variety of different kind of films within the same spectrum and not just rely on like a filmmaker who might have been all in on a particular genre or subgenre. For my number 10 pick on my LA sleaze list, I went for a film that I had only recently just discovered like a few years back, thanks to a wonderful Blu-ray put out by Fun City Editions. It is a movie from 1985 called Walking the Edge. It's directed by Norbert Measle, who directed some pornography and other exploitation fare, but it stars Nancy Kwan, Robert Forrester, and Joe Spinell. You know, it's got Joe Spinell, you know, it's gonna just kind of be sleazy by default. Not saying he's a sleazy guy, but he played a lot of sleazy roles and he does in this one. For those you haven't seen, it basically a taxi driver and also a tough guy strong arm for like a low rent mob, played by Robert Forrester, inadvertently is taking around a woman played by Nancy Kwan, who's looking for revenge on a gang that killed her family, and now he's mixed into it. The movie's really terrific because you get great performances by, you know, Robert Forrester, Nancy Kwan, and Joe Spinell. You get to see a lot of LA. It also is inadvertently a Christmas movie because in the opening credits, you see a shot of the Capitol Records building in Hollywood where it has the Christmas lights up. So yeah, Walking the Edge is a Christmas movie. And if you go further back into the Cinematic Boy vlog, I actually did a filming location video on Walking the Edge. It is actually the first filming location video I did. It wasn't full, but just kind of did some spots kind of around where I walk around every day pretty much. But it's a really great movie, really great Blu-ray. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check out Walking the Edge. For number nine on my LA sleaze list, it's a movie directed by the queen of punk cinema, who of course is Penelope Spears. She did, you know, Suburbia, as well as the decline of Western civilization documentaries. And this is one of the grittiest, meanest fucking movies I've ever seen. I'm talking about The Boys Next Door. It stars Maxwell Caulfield, yes, you know, Rex Manning from Empire Records, and he's also in Grease too, and Charlie Sheen. The screenplay was by Glenn Morgan and James Wong, who obviously worked on The X-Files, as well as wrote the original Final Destination, along with uh, the Black Christmas remake, the first one, Black Xmas. And holy shit, this movie is just mean. Mean, mean, mean. I, there's no other way to put it. Basically, there's a two kind of bumpkin teens decide to go on a road trip and go to LA. And then once they get there, like their ultimate evil is unlocked and bodies start piling up, shit goes awry. It is a bleak movie. I actually got to screen the premiere of the new restoration of this way back, I think it was 2019, at the very first Seven Films. Super Shock pop-up film festival. It was at the Egyptian Theater in the Little Theater of Spielberg, and the movie was the second film to play that night, and it just like sucked the wind out of the room and just, you know, ruined people's day. And honestly, I like that. 
You know, you can't always do fun stuff. Sometimes you just gotta ruin people's day. I've done this many times at screenings, double features and marathons. Most infamously recently, when I did the seven years of Boyd Marathon, played the Warriors where everyone's all hyped and then came in with Jody Amato's Beyond the Darkness and just took took everyone's mood down a notch or 15. But The Boys Next Door is that kind of movie. You know, get to see lots of seedy LA scenery. And if you haven't seen it yet, there's a great Blu-ray by Severn Films, Healthy Spears, goat filmmaker, you know. If she can do this in Wayne's World, like, you know, that's that's a fucking, that's craft. For number eight on my LA sleaze list, I'm sure a few of you are gonna say, hey, this should be a little bit higher. It feels like it should be higher. I'm gonna explain why it's where it's at. The film is written and directed by Paul Schrader, probably best known for being the screenwriter on Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, lots of Scorsese stuff. And the movie's called Hardcore. It stars George C. Scott, Peter Boyle, Susan Hubley, and for those of you who haven't seen it, basically George C. Scott plays like a very religious man who finds out his daughter has disappeared in LA and has gotten mixed up in the world of pornography. So he goes there to rescue her and, you know, he does all kinds of crazy shit, like goes undercover as a porn casting director. He enlists the help of Susan Hubley, who's a prostitute, to help kind of find his daughter. It is a gritty, gritty, dark, sad movie. I mean, the only unfortunate thing is definitely the scene where Peter Boyle plays the porn with George C. Scott's daughter in it. That scene has been mean to death. If you've seen any photos of George C. Scott with his head in his hands doing this, feeling sad, and then him screaming, yeah, that's all from hardcore. Now, why is this ranked lower than a lot of you might be expecting? Well, because the climax of the film takes place in San Francisco, they leave LA. So you gotta knock it for some points for that. And I'm going to give a little bit of spoiler here. This won't be the last time you see Season Hubley as a prostitute on this list. Coming in at number seven on my LA sleaze list is a movie I just recently screened back in February 2024. It is Hollywood 90028 from 1973. It was directed by Christina Hornisher, and this is her only feature length film. No one's quite sure how she landed on making a exploitation movie, but. It definitely has art house leanings along with the exploitive nature of it. The film stars Christopher Augustine, Jeanette Diggler, Gail Davis, and basically it's about this guy that has a dream of being a photographer. He moved to Los Angeles to fulfill his dream. And of course, the only work he can find is, you know, basically shooting porn loops for the porn houses. And basically his frustration and weird stuff going on with his family and stuff, he's, he's not very well mentally. The only way he can like kind of make himself feel better is going out and strangling women. And I will say that for a movie that was also retitled The Hollywood Hillside Strangler as well as Twisted Throats, which, you know, that's a great fucking name for a movie. Might make a great band name. So if you're looking for a band name, Twisted Throats, just sitting there ready for the taking. But it's also very art house, experimental, you know, was shot without you know, sync sound, so everything was, you know, dubbed in later. So it kind of gives this kind of weird voiceover narration quality to a lot of the dialogue and a lot of the dialogue exchanges. Kind of feels like a Terrence Malick movie. It's definitely more artsy than exploitive until you get the ending. The ending is one of the wildest fucking things I've ever seen. It might be one of the best endings ever made, and it's in this movie, and I'm not going to spoil it because... This movie's kind of getting a lot of buzz thanks to Grindhouse releasing and their new restoration. And it's just like, it's something to be seen. And I don't want to take away that gut punch, but like, you know, stick through it. Because that ending makes, the ending makes the movie. Like I said, I just recently got to screen the restoration and add two of the actors there. Christopher Augustine, who was the lead, and Gail Davis, who was one of the victims in the movie. It was a great fun Q&A and really can't wait for this restoration hit Blu-ray so more people get a chance to see it. For number six on my LA sleaze list, this was the movie that Joe Rubin and I were talking about and trying to get a screening together for and like do a triple feature or marathon for. It is a movie called Don't Answer the Phone. It was released by Crown International Pictures who was one of the big exploitation companies for many, many years. It released a lot of like beach themed like sexploitation movies like The Beach Girls and Malibu Beach and you know other kind of youth culture things like Van Nuys Boulevard. The film was directed by Robert Hammer, who only directed one movie. The film stars Nicholas Worth, who some of you might have seen in Sam Raimi's Dark Man. He plays an ex-Vietnam vet who's just royally fucked in the head, likes to lift weights and get ripped and then go kill women. 
Oh, and he also likes to crank call a radio DJ and like talk about his crimes because he's egocentric like that. This movie is just grimy, sleazy, it'll make you feel uncomfortable. But you also get to see a lot of footage of Hollywood Boulevard in the late 70s, early 80s, including a shot of the Egyptian theater where I've hosted many a screening at when they were doing the premiere of Ridley Scott's Alien. You get to see a quick shot of that, along with some other shots of Hollywood Boulevard. Another connection I have to Don't Answer the Phone is I actually worked on a couple of the DVD featurettes back in the day on it. And it's been kind of nice because those featurettes have been ported over to every release of Don't Answer the Phone, including the most recent that was put out by Vinegar Syndrome. Coming in at the number five spot on my LA Sleaze list is one of the most nasty, brutal, ugly, mean exploitation movies ever made. It is The Toolbox Murders from 1978, directed by Dennis Donnelly. It stars character actor Cameron Mitchell, who's been in all kinds of TV shows from Murder, She Wrote to like, you know, Mario Bava's Blood and Black Lace. The film also stars Pamela Ferdinand, who voiced Lucy in one of the Charlie Brown TV specials. So yeah, that's quite a career trajectory. And porn star Kelly Nichols, who appears in the most infamous sequence in The Toolbox Murders. Uh, not going to tell you too much of it, but it does involve a very, very long bath and then the use of a nail gun. So that's all you get. And in case that the title of the movie didn't kind of give it away, basically there's a guy that's killing people in a apartment building using the tools out of a toolbox, you know? Otherwise, why call it toolbox murders? That seems like be false advertising otherwise. Another thing I want to point out about the toolbox murders is a little bit of the direct evolution out of Sergio Martino's torso. You know, you both get a mass killer, you get the sleazy and sexploitation elements. You know, this movie came out in 1978, the same year as John Carpenter's Halloween, so it's kind of two different threads of like slasher DNA. You know, you go one way like Carpenter did, or you could just go completely bonkers and make people really want to just take a hot, hot shower after watching like the Toolbox Murders. Coming in at number four on my LA Sleaze list is a movie from 1984. It's directed by Danny Steinman, who directed my personal favorite Friday the 13th sequel, Friday the 13th Part 5. The movie is Savage Streets. It stars Linda Blair, John Vernon, who's one of my all-time favorite character actors, and an early appearance by Linnea Quigley. Blair plays Brenda, who basically is seeking revenge on a group of scumbag guys that rape and beat up her sister and, and kill her best friend. It is one of the kind of grimier exploitation revenge movies out there. While the movie is very, very brutal and nothing to really laugh at, it does have one of the most insane line readings I've ever heard in any movie, which is John Vernon telling the scumbag boys to go fucking iceberg. And just like that John Vernon way that he only he can deliver a line. Go fucking iceberg. Also, this was the sixth event I hosted as Cinematic Void back in 2016. It was in the little Spielberg Theater that used to be inside the Egyptian Theater that's no longer there. Rest in peace. Had some of the cast come out, showed a 35mm print. It was ended up being a great screening. I would say this is the event where Cinematic Void kind of started really coming into its own. You know, it was the first time I sold out that little room. I know 80 seats doesn't sound a lot, but for me at the time when... I had a couple screenings that didn't do as well. It was kind of a big deal. And it really kind of gave me the confidence because this was the second q and I'd ever done and I had never thought about doing Q&A. So, you know, it was a great event. I mean, it's a brutal watch for obvious reasons, but you know, great event for a brutal movie. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes, I do. Well, you're gonna meet him. For number three on my LA Sleaze list, all I gotta say is Bronson is loose again. That's right, I'm talking about Death Wish 2, directed by Michael Winter, starring the iconic Charles Bronson. In this movie that follows up the original Death Wish, Bronson's Paul Kersey architect character moves to LA, you know, trying to start a new life, except he runs into some thugs, they have an altercation, the thugs break into his house, rape and murder his daughter and housekeeper, so, you know, fuck being an architect, it's Bronson's gonna be a vigilante again. Where the original Death Wish was at least somewhat nuanced, like at this point in Michael Winter's career, he's like, fuck nuance, and he just went bonkers. Yeah, Death Wish 2, it's number three on my list. A really, really brutal, bonkers experience. I, I don't know how a movie could be as brutal and as bonkers at the same time, but that was just, that's Michael Winter. That's a rare talent, I guess. For number two on my L.A. Sleaze list comes a movie that Martin Scorsese, yes, that Martin Scorsese, considered one of the best movies to be made in 1982, which of course is Vice Squad, directed by Gary Sherman, who also directed Dead and Buried and Deathline. The movie stars Susan Hubley in her second appearance on this list, as well as Gary Swanson, 
and Wings Hauser, who plays the very, very infamous Ramrod. For those of you who haven't seen Vice Squad, basically Susan Hubley's prostitute character gets roped into doing some undercover to catch a vicious, sadistic, misogynist pimp, aka Ramrod. Uh, they do a sting, catch him, but guess what? Ramrod breaks free, so he's hunting after Susan Hubley's character for the rest of the movie, and now the cops have to stop him before he gets her. The opening credits song, Neon Slime, is actually sang by Wings Hauser, and the way he takes on the song really sets the tone for what you're about to dive into on those filthy, brutal, ugly streets of Hollywood. Uh, and I should mention that I'm actually getting to screen this movie on Hollywood Boulevard coming up with actors Wings Hauser and Gary Swanson in person. Really looking forward to that. And for number one on my LA Sleaze list is a movie that is directed by one of the co-writers of Vice Squad, Robert Vincent O'Neill. And the movie I'm talking about is 1983's Angel. The film stars Donna Wilkes as Angel, who's a high school student by day, but prostitute by night. And her only real family is all of her street friends, which is filled out with all kinds of great character actors like Susan Tyrell, Dick Sean, and Rory Calhoun. And basically, Angel, while, you know, trying to do well in school and make a living on the streets, has to deal with a serial killer that's going around and killing prostitutes. Uh, this, I feel like, is the epitome of L.A. Slee's movies. I was actually torn if this was going to be number one or Vice Squad was going to be number one. I feel like it was kind of a coin flip. I just went with my gut and put Angel at the number one spot. I'm actually getting ready to screen Angel again, this time down the Free to Cinema, part of a double feature with... Freeway, but I've previously shown it on the Cinematist movie and I kind of helped get it slotted into a uh, 80s LA horror marathon that I participated in and helped work on with Winter Mitchell through the LA Phil. Yes, the LA Phil put together a horror marathon and I got the sneak angel in it. So that's my LA sleaze list. Um, sound off in the comments or on social media. Tell me what you think about it or tell me what your favorite LA sleaze movies are or if there's anything on the list that you end up checking out, tell me what you think about it. Like, again, I, it's kind of hard to recommend these movies just by the nature of the subject matter of a lot of them, but I think they're all unique and worthy to watch, especially if you really like exploitation cinema. This is part of the fun of doing these things, you know, creating discussion, talking about movies, getting people to check out things they haven't seen, or, you know, getting recommendations from other people for things that I haven't seen. So I hope you've enjoyed this list. Like I said, I got another one that's going to be coming out a little later this month and probably be doing a few more throughout the year. Um, if you like me doing lists, tell me. I'll start doing more lists. But until next time, see you in the void. The worst was yet to come.